Hello everyone. Uh, before I start, if somebody can let me know, am I loud and clear? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. A very good afternoon. And myself, Ekta Dubey, on behalf of the Brinalytics team and our partner PTC, we welcome you all on a round table, which is giving a voice to products in the field, business value from a connected product strategy. Before we start the webinar, uh, of course, uh, there are a few guidelines that I would like to uh, highlight. All the audiences, of course, are on mute. Uh, we would definitely encourage the Q&A. You can raise your hands uh, when the panel is uh, discussing uh, the topic. And we would individually nominate your names when you raise your hand. And you can put your question to the panel. So to start with, uh, I'm glad to introduce our presenting partner, PTC. PTC enables global manufacturers to realize double digit impacts with software solution that enables them to accelerate product and service innovation, improve operation efficiency and increase workforce productivity. In the combination with an extensive partner network, PTC provides customers flexibility in how its technology can be deployed to drive digital transformation on premises in the cloud and via its pure SaaS platform. Today, we have an interesting discussion, which basically focuses on developing after-market strategy, increasing revenue and profits. And I'm glad to introduce our panel members. We have Mr. Vivek Jawani, Digital Officer IT Lead CISO from l &T Defense. We have Mr. Shiva Shankar Jutari, Global Process Director with Volvo Group. We have Mr. Tripurari Kumar, Group CFO with Burway Engineering Limited, Mr. Gorofal, Head of Marketing and Head of Sales with CA Tires Limited, Mr. Subharnapal, Process Automation COE with Stellantis ICT Digital Hub. We have Cesaris Kiyati, Digital Business Development Manager with Chelly Group. Mr. Dhrendra Kulkarni, Senior Director Solutions Consulting with PTC. And now I would like to welcome a moderator, Mr. Ajay Dawalmi, which is Customer Success Manager with PTC. Thank you all the thought leaders for taking out your time today. And I am sure that this is going to be a very interesting panel. Over to you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, the introductions over here. And I'm uh, really glad to have all of you here on this panel. I think this is going to be an interesting discussion with a wide variety of audience that we have in this panel here. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, the connected product strategy, you know, uh, or we call it as product as a service, uh, which uh, currently is one of the major needs of each and every industry. Okay. Back in the day, uh, we never had, you know, a visibility, the manufacturers never had a visibility once their product went out of their go-down or their factory premise. And there was very limited control over these products. But now with, you know, uh, the changing times and the customer demands, we have seen this as one of the major requirements and each and every industry is gearing up. Some have already taken steps to you know, accomplish goals, whereas the other industries are trying to catch up and you know, with a lot of constraints through. So this is where you know, I wanted to you know, open up with this panel uh, to understand what it means for your industry, what it means for you as you know an individual within your uh, industry, within your market, and the company that you represent. So you know, I would rather you know have these set of questions uh, being lined out for you. Initially, I want to understand from you, uh, each one of you, how it works, how connected product strategy works for your industry for your company, okay? Uh, we also have uh, Cesare from Selly Group who would later on also present his story of, uh, you know, this entire transformation which they have already achieved uh, using some of our products. Uh, and you will learn from him as well, the journey ahead. So without, you know, uh, spending much time, I would rather uh, move on to Mr. Gaurav Pul. Uh, Mr. Gaurav, we don't see you on this panel yet right now. Yeah, we have just asked him to uh, on his video so that I, I can add him to the spotlight. Okay.
Ekta, you want me to wait or we could, yeah, there we have Mr. Gaurav as well. Hi, Welcome, hi, Mr. Gaurav. Everyone. Yeah, thanks, Ajay. Sorry, I'm traveling. So uh, that's why I have a bit of a patchy network. Uh, so a uh, uh, very good afternoon to everyone, uh, to the panelists, fellow panelists. Happy to be part of this esteem, uh, esteemed uh, panel today. I think sure. uh, connected product strategy is, is a very interesting topic which, is, uh, which has been chosen for today's discussion. Uh, I think it has moved from being a nice to have uh, uh, strategy to a must have strategy across industries. And, uh, and, and, and uh, so I think uh, we as industry leaders also have a crucial role to play in ensuring that the strategy is actually deployed in such a way that uh, the customer gets the best benefit. I think what, what why this also required is that it helps you guide the customer to use the product so that he gets the best possible output out of it. And also it helps you get the get get insights as to how the customer is using your product and uh, and and what needs to be done to the product or what additional features or what additional tweaks need to be done to the product. In our kind of industry, uh, uh, there have been a couple of uh, uh, connected product solutions which have been deployed. Uh, so to start off with, uh, there's something called as tire pressure management system or TPMS as it's called in, uh, in the tire industry, wherein uh, it's a very basic kind of solution, wherein a customer can get to know what is the right, whether he is running on the right pressure or not, because both under inflation and over inflation of tire have, have got their own set of uh, negatives. If you have over inflated the tire, then you'll have a bouncy drive. Uh, you won't have the control on road and also you get long, the, a lower uh, life from the tire than you than what you should get, and if you have an uh, underinflated tire, then of course you have more fuel consumption and lower life. So a TPMS system is something which which helps a customer check or 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 or, uh, or 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 ensure that his vehicle or his tire is running on the right pressure as recommended by the manufacturer, and that helps him get the best uh, best kind of uh, uh, life and best kind of uh, output from his tire, and uh, this is is has been in the industry for quite some time. And the good thing is this has been lapped up not only by the, the, the passenger customers, the passenger segment, the urban customers, which are normally the first ones to lap up any opportunity, but also by uh, the commercial users or the rural customers uh, who have found value in these kind of products. This, this has also been taken one step further, wherein uh, 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 we have, I mean, the industry has not restricted itself only to the tire pressure, but we've also included other uh, things into, into what a customer can monitor when he's traveling, when he's driving his vehicle, which is he can get to check what is that, the temperature of the tire, what is the kind of load on each tire, and what is the kind of tread, bit, tread the depth of the tire, which actually helps the customer certain that what kind of grip or what kind of traction you will get on the road. So all these parameters are available for the customer to check through, again, well, this solution, as I said, is, 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 is being called as an intelligent tire. And again, has been lapped up uh, by by customers across, more by the commercial customers, the the truck fleets, who have find merit in this because this gives uh, this ensures that the the truck when it's on road, the tire doesn't uh, give away and uh, they don't lose out on time because they have time time critical deliveries to be done. And uh, of course, uh, apart from commercial customers, it's in the rural segment. The tractor users also have started. Uh, uh, liking this uh, or using these kind of solutions. So uh, that's that's a perspective on connected uh, product solutions from the from the tire industry space. Uh, Ajit, uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Gaurav. Uh, this was a nice insight. Actually, we use this so often, uh, but yeah, this is a good uh, example where you know uh, directly the customer gets uh, benefited out of this intelligent solution. Uh, on the same track, I'll move to Mr. Vivek. Uh, Mr. Vivek, uh, I want to understand from you, you know, with your function as uh, CISO and digital uh, IT lead, uh, how do you see this connected product strategy and you know, the results that you can explain upon? So Ajay, uh, see, I come from a manufacturing background and a manufacturing company. I am a mechanical engineer working in IT now. So, uh, uh, so I, I I would like to talk about uh, as a as a recipient of uh, this uh, connected uh, uh, products strategy, uh, and uh, to make this discussion a little precise, I will take an example of a particular product. Uh, 
and uh, brand is not important but how it works so for any manufacturing uh, uh, company like uh, ours obviously connected products are important part of a digital uh, transformation strategy and uh, 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 for a manufacturing like uh, company like us uh, majority of the cost uh, and cycle time are contributed by welding welding cycle time and we we use this welding machines as uh, you know primary uh, uh, gmw and all the source of machines so uh, we started with a single machine and we made investment with the belief that uh, you know this data would create uh, value for us at that point of time the rois were not clear and all these things were not clear because it was the starting uh, but this company gave us that okay you start with the utilization only utilization whether the working machine is working or not up time down time so that was and, and, a, and a small dashboard right for this particular thing the second phase of maturity which they helped us achieve was moving from utilization to machine maintenance that okay is your machine getting maintained properly or not the third phase with they took us that okay your machine is you, you know utilization you know maintenance but what is the quality parameters it is producing so at different stages different data were different type of data was given to us and different maturity that value creation was different and uh, uh, there came a stage where we were very happy you know to spend money because we could see the roi uh, coming and uh, it was not that at the day zero we were making a large investment it was a, a atom size goal which were taken at the zero stage and uh, uh, it moved forward in a very structured manner so uh, the point i want to tell is that uh, incremental atom size goal for our customers in any in any industry uh, if you can do you can you know start slow hold and uh, if they are to fail enable them to fail early at very lower cost handle them and if you can do that i think you can stick with the customers for a very long period of time and you know achieve the uh, we are the, uh, the ultimate goal this welding machine story what uh, i told is not only for one brand of welding machine but very uh, uh, you know for other other type of machines like uh, for plano milling uh, machines uh, also so uh, yeah this is what uh, ajay i wanted to talk about this one. thank you so much vivek uh, this is so uh, insightful so if i have to understand utilization maintenance uh, these were your primary goals but uh, does this also help you uh, to you know build a newer brand for you uh, you know with these additional capabilities did that help uh, you know also to enhance your customer i'll tell you like this is like uh, we used to talk about uh, on time delivery right otd what we call it uh, at this thing in uh, our kind of business generally it is not heard of so now uh, the transformation which has taken place is otd to how much btd i mean uh, people don't talk ke bhai tumne kitna deliver kiya i mean this is a public uh, information it can be sort with my company you will find that okay this was delivered one month in advance or two months in advance so this is unheard of in our kind of business so that transformation uh, it would not be a fair thing only uh, through you know connected uh, products but as a broad digital transformation strategy which includes uh, office automation deployment of uh, suitable analytics in decision making uh, obviously connected uh, uh, products is uh, one of them so the whole uh, gambit of uh, technology platforms was leveraged at value chain and this actually uh, led to an uh, before time delivery and quality obviously when we are talking about our kind of business is something which is uh, not a good to have thing but it's a mandatory thing so uh, the result which uh, uh, this uh, we achieved for customers was in terms of uh, the time of the in the delivery great thank you so much so i want to move on to mr siva shankar uh can you just enlighten us on you know you are leading the process automation and you know are the process uh, domain so in that how do you see the connected product strategy uh, work for you uh, are there any examples that you can share and you know in terms of taking this decision what was key primary you know driver for you i i'll talk about i'll talk about a couple of aspects in terms of uh, 
one from a process and a technology landscape perspective as to how this impacts us as an organization at the back end. But then connected with that in the automotive industry that I am from as how this would impact the products out there at the front end in the market. I mean, you, you're talking about an organization, when you're talking about an organization which are about 50, 60 years in the industry and been, uh, have been growing over a period of time, acquiring businesses, acquiring products in the market, you'll have a landscape which is very, very, very uh, different from each other. And systems, product information, though we, can, we gather a lot of information from the products that are out there in the market, especially through telematics and other things, you will not have the systems talking to each other, not being able to understand how different products behave in different environments and how these systems and then the data that you collect will not be able to talk to each other because of the system and the landscape uh, variance that you have from product to product. That, that, that will not enable you in terms of in any which way look at and analyze and improve the products at the front end. Now, if you have a uh, an architecture which is seamless that what we call today in our world is an star architecture in terms of having the technology architecture moving towards one platform, having all the systems in your process connected, feeding of information from one system to another system, seamless integration between these systems will help us in terms of looking at the data that is generated by the products out there in the market and also the process that we kind of work with them will be able to give us a lot of information. Simple examples could be a customer building that you will have to do. Uh, if you are doing a customer building uh, in one system that doesn't come and talk to your ledger in a very seamless way, then your accounting system is not talking to the customer system, which will not feed any information in terms of getting your P&L right, in terms of getting your reporting right. Now, if, if this has to be strengthened, if this has to be uh, uh, kind of uh, improved. There's there's a tremendous amount of uh, 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 work that you have to do if it was not transformed from a digital perspective. So you'll have to make sure that this this digital transformation is taken up front. And that is something that we kind of uh, do it day in day out in terms of our North Star architecture and digital interfaces that we do have single platform of uh, uh, reporting and technology integrations. Make sure that systems talk seamlessly uh, without packets being dropped in between because that's that's the biggest risk that you have. That is predominantly from the technology space. But then I was talking about telematics and then seven, eight years back, the, the revolution that you're seeing in the automotive industry in terms of vehicle performance, vehicle breakdown in the market, all this information, when it is feeding back into your systems in the organization seamlessly, and you come back, you will add a lot of value to the customers in terms of on time maintenance, the requirement of, I mean, we are not talking about small machines, we are talking about heavy machinery in the mines, we are talking about heavy equipment on the roads there, uh, moving our, uh, moving our, uh, moving our uh, goods that we would want, logistics especially, right? For these kind of uh, uh, machines and systems that we are talking about, the data that these systems feed back, analyze them, will help the customers that we work with improve their profitability because the, 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 the strategy that we work with as an organization is to see, can we keep the machine 24 bar seven up and running for them? Because that's the most important thing, but that is what enables our customers do more work and benefit out of them. So a lot of things uh, like this that works behind the, in terms of the technology world as well as in the process world along with the products world that we kind of work with and benefit of. Thank you. This uh, this is an interesting one. You know, where you say that you know one is the operations and performance, but tying it back to the accounting system and making sure there is a seamless transition where where I think uh, your one is able to quantify and also monetize upon these initiatives that's that's also a great insight thank you so much uh, so, so i'll move on to mr uh, subarna pal subarna uh, can you give us uh, some insight on the connected product strategy and you know yeah, with sure your customers yeah. and your experiences on it so first of all i would like to thank uh, brain analytics and ptc for giving me this opportunity to share this you know 
uh, uh, and contribute, you know, uh, my views in, you know, with this esteemed panel here. Uh, so thank you for that. And thanks, Ajay, for asking this question. It's very relevant today in terms of, you know, how the products are evolving, how the services are evolving. Correct. So I would like to take a step back for a minute or so. So, you know, you know how and why did it start, correct? So, you know, you know, so the automation was, you know, the core area of productivity enhancements, you know, right from probably mid 1950s and all that start, it started. So 1960, 70 onwards, you know, it was mostly on a kind of, you know, individual activity level, the thing started, correct? You have kind of, you know, need to, need to process order. So you need to kind of, you know, devise some system uh, around it, or you need to kind of, you know, you know, in, invoice your customer, probably do something for invoicing. So it was like, you know, all those individual activities or the things were there. Then it led to individual productivity enhancements. Now, after that 80s, late 80s and early 90s with the advent of, you know, uh, and rise of internet. So all those, you know, different systems and processes started getting connected with each other. And, and you know, uh, you know, across the geographies and across the ecosystem, like suppliers, channel partners, customers and all that stuff. Okay. And it led to further productivity gains and growth in the economy. Okay. But in these two phases of this, you know, transformation, actually, uh, so it was mostly around the productivity uh, gains, correct? But nothing, you know, uh, changed on the product perspective as such. The product, you know, used to have its own life cycle of development and enhancement and all those things. It was going through that, okay? But now with this, you know, uh, you know, you know, early 20, uh, 2000, you know, uh, with the advent of this, you know, the, the cloud technologies, the, the the kind of sensors, embedded sensors, processors, the the enhancements of the connectivities, it led to enhancements in the product itself. And the value of the product is not lying within the product now; it is residing outside the product as well. Okay, so if I look at it, a smart connected product. So there are three components of it. Okay, one is a physical product. Okay, and another is the smart component of it, which enhances the connective, the capability and the value of the physical product and the connectivity component, which further amplifies the smartness of the, you know, the, 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 the capability and value of the smart components actually. Okay. And, and that lead to kind of, you know, monumental gain in terms of the value deliveries. Now, if I take an example from the car industry, okay, uh, or the vehicle industry, so what these physical components are, probably the engines, tires, batteries, you know, uh, some of my fellow uh, panelists have talked about those. Now, uh, the smart components are existing in the cars. We have seen that, you know, the sensors, microprocessors are existing, like the engine control unit, correct? The anti-lock braking systems, or, you know, your rain sensing windshields, okay? But these are like, you know, uh, understanding the local environment and acting on it so it gives certain value addition to the customers and customers are definitely moving away from a from a product which is not offering to this and and you know versus a product which is offering to this now you know after this the connectivity components like you know uh, the, the ports antennas the protocols uh, which is probably you know mostly on wireless you know components gave a rise to uh, multiple you know basically uh, advantages like you know we have seen in the case of tesla where the the, the upgrades are getting pushed over the internet Correct. Where certain, you know, you know, the, the the if the vehicle is not performing and if it is a software, it can be tackled through software. You need not visit a workshop. Okay. It reduces, you know, probably the friction, the the kind of pain which a customer goes through and enhances the customer experiences. So these these kind of enhances the overall value delivery uh, through the connected product strategy. And most importantly, on the connection piece, the, uh, the organizations need to, you know, uh, focus on three aspects. So connections can be one to one which is like a vehicle a vehicle can be connected to a diagnostic you know basically station okay uh, or a machine then one to many like the example of tesla pushing for, you know the updates from manufacturing system to probably all the vehicles and there's a many to many where it is like it is also becoming aware of the ecosystem and the environment where it operates okay and that's where i believe the true potential of the you know the value uh, lies so some examples like you know i would like to take you know uh, a basic just so one example uh, I would like to take from the telematic solution. Now it is basically a hardware solution with a GPS location, probably you are getting it. Now you have a kind of fleet management solution, which is probably a software application. Now embed this two and deliver as a product to probably the vehicle owner. Okay. And see the values, you know, it augments like anything. 
So this is probably what I can think of. Uh, you know, some other examples which I can also take off, like the smart grid, okay, of ABB, which kind of you know uh, monitors and measures the transformation temperature, the and, and and probably other things and ambient conditions, and it can possibly detect an overload conditions, so that you know it does not actually lead to actual failure, thus saving the downtime and probably dispatching your you know probably maintenance staff to do some preventive maintenance, you know, uh, uh, right before it happens there. So this, I think, you know, part of values, what we can see, you know, is, is kind of, you know, this connected product strategy, you know, is, is going to deliver. And as we see more and more of those kind of you know, solutions are going to evolve into this space. So in, in your view, if I have to summarize, you know, like, or to understand, definitely uh, customer, is the key driver who's you know asking for many things to happen, uh, whereas uh, the ease of service or you know getting more features to the customer is one of the key drivers uh, that you find here. Uh, the kind of solutions that you mentioned. Uh, in terms of taking up these solutions, you know, trying to take up a certain initiative, uh, what do you think is again you know what? maybe the hindrance or what may be the you know uh, likely driver to take it forward what do you what is your view on that today in today's scenario in the market today okay so uh, the question is to me ajay yes 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 the question okay. to you so so i believe you know uh, it is it is not just you know uh, you know one uh, kind of approach which you can fit you know, uh, across the industries and definitely the space where an organization operates the value or the product it offers to its customer, it all, you know, kind of, you know, points to that. So, you know, it, it is a kind of multifaceted uh, and cohesive effort, you know, across organizations it needs to be, okay, right from strategy, you know, because it has to be, sorry for that, you know, sorry for that. Yeah. So it is. It is like you know the the strategy. The, the it needs to be very clear that from an organization standpoint, from employee experience to customer experience, from a supply and experience standpoint, where the organizations wants to reach, and you know probably beat the customers. Okay, or, or beat the competitors. Sorry to say. Okay. So this is like you know. Yeah, so it is like, you know, uh, these things, you know, which are uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, going to play a major role. Then after the strategy, the marketing things also, because the, the moment, you know, uh, probably you sell a product like a vehicle being sold, okay, as a fleet, you know, to a fleet owner or, or like a commercial vehicle versus probably if you, you know, probably complement with a fleet management solution with a telematics kind of integration, the marketing approach needs to be changed. Correct. So uh, those things also be modified. The, the way probably a customer support department or, or, or the technician, the after sales, you know, people need to act, that also needs to be, you know, changed. Like, you know, earlier it is like the vehicle reporting to the workshop and there has to be kind of you are attending to that or not vehicle, correct? And you are giving an on-time kind of, you know, delivery with respect to whatever TAT, you know, or SLA has been fixed. But now it is like, are you detecting beforehand? Are you reaching to your customers rather than customer reaching to you? And probably, you know, uh, you know, kind of anticipating those, you know, problem statements and addressing those beforehand. So those kind of customer delight are coming into picture. So it is like, you know, across the organization, are most importantly the employee also the employee skill sets also needs to be checked okay the same set of skill sets might not be relevant in today's scenario okay so the okay. hr department has to be you know really you know kind of you know focus on and across the organizations also the upskilling of the employees rather than probably hiring or so it can be a mix of both depending upon the again the space where the organization is it can be a mix of both it needs to be worked on and uh, the last you know are probably the you know uh, the most important point the security aspects with all this connect you know connectivities and other things coming into picture the the, the securities and in fact the sensitivity to the personal data and all those things need to be taken care of so it is it is a kind of you know across the organizations across the boards uh, the things need to work you know like a well oiled machinery rather than probably a department taking initiative a department can take but it may lead to a initial success to pocs or pilots but if it needs to really scale it up it should be across the uh, board you know what i believe Uh, I'll move on to Mr. Uh, Tripurari Kumar. Yeah, hi Ajay. Hi everybody on the panel. How are you? Hello. So yeah, 
we wanted to get your insight uh, towards the connected product strategy uh, you know yeah. you represent a function which is the group cfo but how do you look at it from a you know uh, market or you know as a potential for uh, like companies like you to take this strategy forward so wanted to hear your yeah. insight as well true so first thing um, being in finance i'm very happy to know that the first of the first connected product uh, that i came across in my life was an atm which is the first iot application and so finance has been in this for a long long time and then having been associated with the auto component space for uh, last 10 years uh, there is very uh, far sighted developments with that which have happened here including some of my uh, panel colleagues have already talked about the telematic device including the uh, telematic based uh, a lot of application which goes into ev so ev itself is a um, fully connected uh, device which is beyond a computer i would say and then talking about uh, the connected car where uh, just not uh, the gps tracking driver behavior uh, digi locker so all these features are there and there was a uh for implementation further where you saw that the car tracker or the telematic device was being used for an insurance pricing so we had a uh, companies where uh, i think bajaj alliance took a lead in terms of mapping the driver behavior filling the uh, the obd dongle in a car and determining your premium so which is very popular outside but i think in india also it is uh, slowly catching up coming to my sector which is manufacturing where i think uh, uh in the near term apart from the productivity availability and real time uh, intimation to the management about the availability of plant tools and machine we are also benefiting on two major counts which i think is worthy of a mention one is uh, in one of my previous firms we deployed uh, ble tag based uh, system uh, so that uh, despite being in a manufacturing space and uh, we had to work in a uh, atmosphere where covid was very very uh, widespread and then we had this uh, bele tag based social uh, distancing protocol implemented in the office and how we were able to manage very quickly uh, uh, at the plant level as well as uh, in the office space so that was something which is very very handy and i think uh, uh, some companies which like to innovate and they want to bring up the best solution for their employees so there was something which is very insightful that we carried out at one of the previous firm and second uh, 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 which is a, a, a further extension of this application where we are the, we are referring this to as a geofencing so what happens is you have a labor uh, and contractual labor at large in the manufacturing facility and sometimes you don't know the accountability or the productivity or their availability and what we are doing this uh, we are mapping this uh, again a bele application putting them across the line ensuring their availability and to some extent productivity also uh, and thereby impacting the overall yield of the line so this is something which we are implementing even in the current organization and uh, we are getting a handsome, handful of results and it's been very very positive so from my standpoint i think uh, to adopt such technologies people have to be a little innovative um, anything which comes across as a convenience at first later becomes uh, a need and as we uh, go forward and we implement these technologies we definitely see value as it unfolds by when we implement these solutions thank you sure thank you uh, just one carry on question on this one was uh, you know with your role uh, when you see initiatives like this being brought to you uh, how do you see it you know uh, you did mention that you know uh, innovation is you know matter of convenience with changes to need but uh, in terms of you know making decisions to invest into new initiatives how do you look at it and how rapidly is it uh, changing in your yeah. industry yeah yeah so i think finance is typically associated with a uh, gate as if we have to block investments we have to yeah. Uh, give them the red herrings uh, this is not right and that is not right so obviously this is a it's a difficult role to do but uh, as we are also partners in growth of the company we understand where uh, we have to evolve as people and uh, get the right solution at the right time so that we have a competitive edge and you know these soft things also when we put across to our customer uh, there are cert- certain brownie points which get associated and in the long term they understand that they can fill up the gap for you and move ahead 
so uh, like in all cases uh, when we come to uh, finance for approval we ensure that there is a business case so like i said uh, when there is a geofencing proposal that we put up obviously sometimes there will be some strategic where we will implement and pilot it but obviously it is supported by a business case in the long run yeah. sure okay thank you thank you for that insight as well thank you so, yeah so i'll move on to uh, dhirendra kulkarni from ptc you know we heard a lot of people from the audience and uh, you know their insights uh, how do you see that Uh, reflecting in our customers today here in india yeah uh, i think uh, i really like uh, the all the panelists uh, where they share their examples uh, right from tire to welding machine to what uh, subarna said and also uh, what uh, the um, uh, the, um, uh, the on the finance side also what he mentioned about the the business case and all of that so i think a uh, connected product strategy is very important uh, like what we are talking about connected manufacturing today a lot of people speak mostly connected manufacturing industry 4.0 and all of that smart manufacturing but connected product is also equally and probably industry 4.0 term is little bit misunderstood that it is only applicable to the manufacturing it's not so industry 4.0 is basically a cyber physical integration whereas any product and the digital product is physical and you know uh, the digital systems have to integrate and get the insights and i think the same same kind of value prop you can get in the product side also and we already heard example of the welding machine and uh, the tire in terms of the pressure and things like that so i see uh, it is resonating well in our experience also connected product strategy is really picking up because otherwise you know uh, you know if you don't adopt to this or if you don't do that somebody else will do and you lose that competitive advantage and we also see that our you know as a ptc you know we come from a technology provider we provide the solutions uh, to the customer to make their product and manufacturing smart and connected and i see that in the last 2 3 or 3 years where it is picking up and you are growing at the rate of 17% 15 to 17% in our product revenue so that itself will tell that more and more people are adopting and if i see really our forecast and how we are working with the uh, various other prospects and customers in next 5 years uh, you know uh, we we tend to grow at least around 30 to 35% so that means it is really growing and today if you see any any product whether it's a uh, uh, whether it's a home appliance or an industrial product they are smart and connected even the fan which is just rotating here you know i can operate it through my app actually it is connected and the reason i got excited and i got this fan is because you know i could i could operate it from my my phone and then there are several other things and if somebody doesn't bring this feature in their fan probably they get isolated from the market right they may have, they might have a good market share but if they don't bring in this and now they have to innovate they have to compete more on how i can add more features or how can make it more efficient and things like that so connected product strategy is there to stay it is picking up and uh, all uh, organizations have to adopt it because at the end of the day people or the customers are buying today based on the experience what they get and only when you make your product smart connected you give that uh, that great experience and anyway as far as the value is concerned i also saw a certain uh, question from mr abhay naik on how the financial values and rois are connected in, uh, are connected to this particular connected product strategy and definitely i think in in now in my view it basically serves two value points or two value pointers one is overall service optimization right so like when when it is connected you get a lot of insights you know what is happening uh, so remote monitoring remote diagnostics so the service technicians understand your overall mean time to repair can go down by almost 50% your service request can come down by 50% and you know your overall service revenue can increase so that's a straight forward roi that what we can connect to the uh, uh, you know connected product strategy the second part is product intelligence or product innovation now by connecting product and getting the data inside and doing some analysis it it brings in a data driven strategy into the organization right so it gives you a lot of ideas and how the customers are using your products whether they are under utilizing over utilizing is there a new market uh, for this particular customer so it gives lot of new business ideas and today everybody must have heard about product as a service right so unless it is smart and connected you can't bring in this product as a service kind of a strategy where it is another business stream or a revenue generating stream that can add to the overall business so overall it's it's really uh, you know there uh, to provide a lot of value and differentiate Uh, from the rest of the others. Thanks again. Thank you. That, that's a great insight, Pirendra. So, I think I've kept uh, Sisare waiting for quite a while. So, I'll move on to Sisare. Uh, Sisare, you on the? 
Si sabe visivo. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I distracted me for a second. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so just, just I wanted to turn to you uh, to understand uh, your journey uh, with this uh, connected product strategy. Uh, we want to understand how it started, how you took, I mean, what things, you know, came in the way and how you matured it from, you know, this entirely draft to a smart warranty or, you know, the entire digital thread that you've affected with uh, the solution. Uh, we want to uh, understand your journey with this. Sure, so over so to you. Sure. Sorry. Just, just to set the ground, so Celli Group is, uh, uh, um, we, we design, manufacture, and provide services on cold beverage dispensing equipment. Uh, our customers uh, in the globe are Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Heineken, Nazaki, beer manufacturers, and also water uh, companies that provide uh, water dispensers and services on them. Uh, I'm in charge of the Celli Digital Solution division. Uh, this is uh, part of the strategy because uh, we started uh, connecting the first uh, coolers uh, for the beer, uh, but we immediately identified that we wanted to make, uh, uh, to make that a service for the market. So we make IoT not uh, on an industrial base. So we, it's not, I'm not talking about IoT in our facilities where we manufacture the equipment. I'm talking about a distributed IoT on the field. So our dispensers go on the field and they are connected to our cloud and we do provide services to our customers. Uh, we, may, we built a, a business unit on that. Uh, I'm in charge of it and uh, we have our own independent PNL. Uh, in a way that we earn money from our customers for the services we provide them. So we are capable to stay on the market. Uh, our IoT staff is at industrial level. I mean that we are not in piloting uh, phases anymore, but we have uh, uh, thousands and tens of tens of thousands of equipment out there connected. Uh, and we, we, we are self-sustained. Uh, another thing that I want to stress is that we actually start with IntelliDraft that was connected, simple machine connected with firmers. Uh, and we started with the focus of making the maintenance part more smart because uh, in order to reduce the costs for the, for the maintenance. But then in the, in the last few years, it, evolves, it evolved uh, towards something that is more consumer engagement related. So now with the smart dispensers, with touch screen uh, interaction of the consumer, consumers that can authenticate to the dispensers, scanning QR codes, uh, we enabled this direct interaction with the cons from the consumer with the dispenser and uh, enabling uh, services like uh, setting up promotions, uh, subscriptions. So let me make an example. Instead of paying for the single pouring as you now do with a coffee machine, you have a monthly subscription fee like Netflix or Spotify or whatever, and you have the right to pour up to two or three liters per day. On top of this, we build up also other services like smart warranty ones. So at the moment, uh, warranty in the markets, in all the markets, warranty is, is very simple. You deliver a piece of equipment and at that moment, the warranty starts. Uh, but uh, you don't know when this equipment is going to be installed, how this equipment will be leveraged and so on and so forth. So we link, first of all, the actual moment of the install and the warranty starts from that moment. So you can keep your, your equipment in the warehouse for three months, six months, whatever. And this helps to lower down the seasonality as well. On the, on the other hand, we link also the warranty with respect to the type of use of the dispenser. If you keep it in a, right uh, good way the, the 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 length of the warranty can increase if you stress it more than it uh, then then the amount we said it is suggested by the manufacturer you reduce the uh, the warranty and and, and that is uh, additional service what is the strategy overall so basically at the moment we are the third player at global level in this market and we are differentiating us from the others we are building up competitive advantages. Other players, do not, they do not have these capabilities. And in fact, we won all the new, all the innovation projects on the market with the key customer, with the key client on the market. And so we are now building 
our competitive advantage for advantage for the next 10, 20 years. That is long story short. Yeah, it's 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 actually a long story. You made it really short, definitely. So uh, what I hear from you, you know, uh, this is very uh, uh, nice to hear that you know you went from selling a product to getting into a monthly subscription model. That's a big change in in the whole way you are offering your product, you know. And uh, again, then linking down the warranties uh, into you know, the total function of that and making sure you, you're not paying extra warranties or, you know, tightening the screw on the warranties and all. I think at one end, you've given absolute comfort to the customer in terms of, you know, changing the way they were using it. You actually changed your entire business model. I mean, that's that's really a big leap in changing from, pro, you know, product to service, uh, you know, kind of mechanism where you're getting into subscription. So a little bit more, can you you know put an emphasis on kind of the technologies uh, used and what were initial hurdles or uh, you know probes? If you can just add a little more on that. Sure. So in terms of technologies, we have uh, uh, two three layers. So one is at the equipment level. So we move. We start from very simple equipment with the uh, control box uh, with sensors connected. They have a firmware. That is a low-level film, where it is a C++ uh, uh, language and things like that. To very smart equipment that they have uh, touch screens uh, you can authenticate with. Uh, they integrate with payment systems uh, and, and and other things. Those uh, are uh, Linux-based programs uh, for embedded devices. Uh, we we leverage, uh, I mean, still C++ for the lower level of the software. The the middle layer is in Python developed in Python and the higher level is HTML uh, on a running on a browser. And this is at equipment level. Then we have the communication. Uh, we are MQTT on MQTT. That is kind of a standard. Or at cloud level, we have a, um, an Azure IoT Hub as a broker, MQTT broker. And then we have a connector toward the, 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 the toward Tingworks, that is the PTC platform, that is the core. Of the of the whole architecture, so everything goes there, and then from that platform, there is some some services given directly from that platform. Otherwise, we have uh, an integration with external, so like backend of apps for consumers or or technical users, and the export of the data to our data lake for a, for an analytics version and a, and a reporting that is uh, that is given, for example, on Tableau, Power BI, and standard tools for reporting, or still to integrate from Teamworks to, uh, plat to, to, to the clouds of the other stakeholders like our customers in order to have a back and forth of, in, of, of information and integrate uh, with them uh, to, 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 to have a more meaningful and, connect and overall connected ecosystem. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely revert back to you with some more questions. Maybe, maybe just one question. Are those, um, Cesare, the backend dashboards that we can see, those are the dashboards that, uh, that oh, yeah. are monitoring uh, the, all the dispensers? Yes, sure. This is our, <laughs> I'm in our Milano office. That is the house of the digitals. Uh, those, these are our, uh, we have, I mean, we are, we are running more than 70, 80, 80 projects. So of course, not, not all of them can be on, on the wall. Uh, but the key ones, we are interested in them. We keep them in the wall in order to keep it monitored, both from a service perspective, so alarm things popping up, and from a uh, business model perspective. So let, let's see if that business model works. Great, yeah, thank you. So I want to move uh, back to, you know, uh, Mr. Vivek, uh, on understanding, you know, when, when you look at these initiatives, uh, what business functions do you think uh, would affront, you know, be the target area or be the prime, uh, you know, uh, target for you to look at uh, with connected product strategy? See, uh, <clears throat> thanks. So the way I look at the function, so when we are saying this functions, when you mean this functions in my uh, the manufacturing side, right? 
So right, right. Uh, the way we look at it uh, is not in a function way. The, the moment we look in the function, we look we, we miss the bigger picture. So we follow a theory of constraints. So it basically is uh, you know focuses on the bottleneck uh, where uh, your throughput is getting delayed. So we have a supply chain view that from the from the point uh, you know your raw material is entering uh, or, or say it starts from the design actually much before that to the uh, after service uh, completion where exactly the, the constraint lies and uh, uh, the better we identify this the better investment decisions we can make and the better end results for the business uh, uh, we can deliver so uh, <clears throat> when we started uh, there were actually two areas uh, uh, this transformation journey uh, that how we deliver the product to customer so two things were identified uh, uh, one where obviously uh, what i already said that it was in the at the core of the manufacturing where uh, uh, this was getting held up but the second uh, area which we identified was uh, uh, generally which people do not uh, you know find that was soft automation and uh, the 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 office work uh, which was actually hampering uh, uh, you know uh, delaying the stuff so uh, uh, office automation obviously we achieved with uh, digitization and robotic process automation and uh, 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 the physical part was uh, achieved through iot and today uh, as as we are speaking connecting all these aspects starting from what you said functions uh, uh, functions is not the right uh, the way we put at it but the entire thread uh, uh, we are into implementation of a, a digital pin which will in, which will give us a collaborative view of uh, uh, our plan that is what we call a plan simulation uh, how the design is flowing and how all the other aspects are uh, working you know uh, around that uh, so uh, to answer the question that which functions we started we started with this office automation and this physical uh, uh, layer which we call it as a iot connected factory whatever ultimately from that point of time we uh, you know we moved on to uh, aut automating all the soft stuff and connecting basically this through uh, this uh, digital bit so this is uh, what this has uh, the last step to you know connect to, to this topic of uh, uh, connected products the last stage is that we also brought customer uh, into this uh, particular loop because uh, see our kind of business in which it takes 7 8 years to deliver one product and my customer is there with us so the modes of delivery the experience in which a conventional b2c kind of business what we think about is not true for our kind of business so our business delivery it happens during the product is produced also so that is uh, uh, that that is uh, where we took this customer on board make them partner to our digital journey the dashboards what uh, uh, we were discussing so uh, the, there is the same dashboard which i see and my customer who is sitting uh, obviously in the next uh, door he also sees the same uh, dashboard so uh, th this is how the synergy was achieved in, in, into the manufacturing uh, uh, which ultimately led to uh, business value. Yeah, that's that's good to know, uh, Mr. Siva. Uh, how about uh, you know, in terms of uh, targeting primary targets from a business function, or you know, who who do you see uh, to prioritize in these scenarios? Like I said, uh, from our process perspective, in terms of uh, the connected solution strategy, it is uh, to make sure that the entire finance architecture is connected to make sure that the, the data flows through seamlessly and uh, as much as possible, the office automation that uh, Vivek was talking about or the process automation that we look at, we would keep it touchless uh, as much as possible and devote time in terms of gaining that uh, space and time for doing the an analysis in terms of the product data that we are getting it from the front end uh, products and then connected solutions and such. So that would be a priority in terms of when you talk about technology and finance uh, uh, area in terms of how we go about doing these things. Right. Mr. Sabana, uh, your view on this? Yeah. 
Uh, so I think, you know, Vivek and uh, Shiva has touched up on, you know, uh, important aspects. So what I would like to add here is that, uh, you know, from a product standpoint and from a process standpoint, okay. Uh, so because these two are very important and, you know, when a company like a vehicle manufacturing company, when it sells the end product might be a vehicle, but the values also provided with it or the services also it provided. Just to take an example, like, cheap compass it it is having a you know uh, connected app kind of thing okay and it has a subscription model also okay and using that subscription you know a subscribe app you know which is as a nominal charge okay you can you know remotely open the boot of the you know uh, the vehicle okay so, you know, and, you know, start, stop, and probably Dedendra, you are talking about the fan example, correct? So those are like, you are expanding your horizon on the product perspective and, in, you know, in, you know, incrementing the value of the product, you know, which was not thought of earlier, okay? But to enable that, as I mentioned or touched upon earlier, okay, the entire ecosystem or support system of the organization needs to gear up, okay? So the process optimization and kind of, you know, uh, the transformation is, is kind of, you know, becoming paramount and uh, it's, Shiva has touched about very important part, like touchless thing. Well, you know, as we do touchless, probably you know, straight you know, straight through processing. We sometimes call it STP kind of thing. Okay, so where you know nothing is required, no human intervention is required, and can we go into more into that mode? So probably that is another area. So and it is you know from a function perspective, I come back. It is not that one particular function is targeted. Probably from an automation standpoint, typically finance is the first thing where the journey has been started somewhere back in 2015, 16, and all that stuff. But right now, talking about 2022, it is across functions. Okay, and everybody is like you know fighting for their own share of improvements, okay? And how they can contribute to the overall process, you know, improvements, optimization, transformation, and also to add on to the value of the product, okay? So it is, it is, it is like across the, you know, uh, the various functions, departments now, which is happening and not uh, focused in, you know, a particular department function, which probably was the case, you know, five years back. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually good to know, you know, that all functions are, uh, collaborating together to you know achieve one uh, intent. Uh, often projects were driven in silos, but now I see that there's a lot of convert. Uh, you know, all people are collaborating together uh, to get in into fact, this. In fact, Ajay, I would like to add one more point. Okay, it is mm -hmm. not the collaboration is happening inside the organization right now. It is going beyond the organization as well. Right. Okay, if I just take an example from again an automotive industry standpoint, Open Automotive Alliance have been formed sometime in 2015. Okay, mm -hmm. and it was started by few automakers across the globe. And now, if you you know refer to their website. The who's who of the automotives, you know, players are there, you know, right from probably Ford, Hyundai, Honda, uh, probably, you know, Tata Motors, Mahindra, and, and probably, you know, the Maserati, uh, the Volkswagen, everybody is there. So the, all OEM players are there. Beyond that, it is it is all the tech, you know, majority of the technology players like Google and NVIDIA is also part of the consortium. And there are other, you know, support players also which are part of that, like LG, you know, uh, you know, Panasonic and, you know, Herman and those guys are there. So it is like an industry convergence also we are seeing and mm -hmm. probably more, you know, as we go, and I'd like to take another example beyond auto also, probably, you know, if we have seen that, you know, home lighting system, correct? So those, you know, manufacturers of the home lighting system was focusing on those things, but probably climate control was different thing, okay? Now, in order to probably, you know, tap to the aspiration of the customers and probably reach to the broader prospect, either they're marching or they are inventing their products and services so they can, they can offer to a larger base of customers. So industry convergence is also another thing which we'll see you know, as a trend coming in probably in this decade, probably more and more. Yes, uh, yeah, this is one good point to touch upon industry con you know, convergence because uh, yes, not just one person can or one company can influence this change. Uh, it needs definitely a lot of parties to come together and uh, bring about uh, both demand and the change. So uh, this was insightful. Uh, I'll revert back to Cesare. And uh, now I want to you know, uh, understand a few factors in terms of you know, what were the metrics or the KPIs you were able to achieve? You, know, you told us about your story, uh, the, the change in the business model and all, but 
just help us understand how this has really benefited you in terms of numbers and metrics. To... So we we have some a few numbers uh, that I can share. Clearly, those we have a, a, a little problem here that uh, if we're talking about the Horeca market, uh, basically it fucked up totally in the last two years. So making uh, comparisons against the past uh, now, it's uh, it, 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 it's impossible. So what we I, I can share numbers that we have back in 2019. So we made a um, very meaningful experiment comparing pre-post pre -post, uh, test, test control groups of outlets with, with uh, connected outlets against not connected outlets. Uh, I'm talking about uh, simple technology. Uh, so like uh, connected coolers. And uh, um, we gained, uh, let me remember, uh, um, uh, a plus 20% of remote resolutions. So instead of sending a technician on field, the call center was capable to, to resolve over the air by accessing the data. A plus, a plus 8% of preventive maintenance, meaning that you were intervening before the issue occurred by measuring the stress of the dispenser. Um, a 5% of CAPEX reallocation, because exactly knowing the pattern of pouring of the outlet, you were capable to uh, understand how to move dispensers also in terms of ranges and sizes to better allocate the capex and an overall uh, saving of 10 percent of service costs consider that this is a market where you pay one for a, for an equipment and you spend seven uh, on top of it in terms of service process during its lifetime so the 10 percent it means that uh, basically you have the dispenser for free more or less uh, other results achieved were in terms of quality. So the, the number of sanitation was were increased by 25%, as well as the quality of the sanitation. Um, another thing is that there was we received we achieved uh, for me outstanding reduction of 85% of expired product poured because we, we knew exactly what was the the the, the, the when when the product has been uh, opened and so we and, and we were knowing about the first and the second shelf life as well and so we were capable by proactively contacting the, the outlet and telling to remove or to finish fast uh, expired product uh, we reduced by 85 percent from a sales perspective uh, we achieved uh, a nine plus 19 percent of uh, new customers so uh, the, the the salesmen who were uh, um, who have the possibility to sell the digitalized solution were 90% 90 more capable to win new customer against uh, standard, uh, standard proposals. And uh, on the other hand, a reduction of 20% of the churn. So customers, once in, they were not abandoning anymore going to, for other, uh, going to competitors because they get, they get, uh, um, they, they, it generates a loyalty because you, since you provide a higher level of service, you, you, you increase the loyalty of the, of your, uh, of the outlets. Um, and lastly, toward the work that we have done over the optimization uh, of the brand portfolios for specific outlets, I'm talking about beer right now, uh, optimization of the portfolios in the outlets, totally data-driven, we achieved a plus 14% of uh, overall sellout. So these are three numbers in three key areas, uh, maintenance, quality, and uh, sales and marketing. And, and this you've measured over the last few years, uh, right? Uh, the, the, uh, th those are numbers from 2019. The problem now is that uh, I don't have a meaningful period to compare with because, because of COVID closures and, and things like that, uh, it's, I don't have a meaningful, I don't have a meaningful free period to compare with what is now. I'm sure that we are doing better because we improved our our we improved our products in the meanwhile. But I don't. I I mean, I just want to say numbers that I can certify. From all the numbers, I have not found a single a single digit number. You've mentioned these numbers in double digits, so this is really amazing, actually. You know, so yeah, this is really fantastic to you know know from somebody who's gone through the path 
and actually achieved these numbers. Uh, it's, it's, it's really encouraging for the industry here. Uh, you know, we're kind of moving towards the end of the session, but uh, there's one question which I definitely want to, you know, ask and I'll again uh, start that round with you. Is when we see these new digital initiatives, you know, uh, what do you think is most key to get adoption? You know, adoption internally, adoption externally. You know, so maybe Vivek, uh, I'll start with you. So uh, <clears throat> I have seen that there are five key elements to adoption of uh, any new technology, as you rightly said, internally or externally. Uh, the first is data literate, uh, data literacy in uh, workforce, and more importantly, leadership team, because uh, that's not that people will not understand, and it will not help. Second is uh, IT infrastructure hygiene. You cannot have a substandard infrastructure and uh, you know deploy machine learning on that or any for that matter any other tools. Third and a very critical these days is availability of right resources. Uh, the market is open like anything, and uh, it is very very difficult to get the right uh, uh, type of resources, uh, right skill metrics. So uh, we ha have a you know strategy of uh, uh, what we call it uh, citizen data scientist. Uh, so that probably is working, but uh, again, the moment uh, you know you have a resource who is working on analytics for a couple of years, uh, it is difficult to retain them. Uh, fourth is culture, which plays an important role because uh, uh, when you have a problem, uh, you know, people have to think of uh, digital tools as a solution, not the conventional uh, TQM and all, all the kind of, uh, you know, conventional tools because, uh, uh, yeah, that's the thing. And fifth is leadership commitment to uh, transformation. Um, a risk will have to be taken because uh, failure is something which you will have to be ready. Um, uh, in my experience, uh, uh, I think we have undertaken more than 120 digital projects of various sizes, and uh, the success to failure ratio is uh, 35, 40 percent. So you need a leadership who will you know support you in this journey. I think if you have these five ingredients, uh, you are you know you are I mean you are on to leverage the transformation. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Siva, what do you feel in terms of adopting these new you know, initiatives? Uh, how do you see it? Uh, what factors would uh, resonate with you? Simple uh, perspective is uh, an important aspect in terms of how you look at it, right? Because, see, mm -hmm. um, Yes, uh, post COVID, uh, when you kind of, I mean, uh, in our case, we have, we were, we were in office during the COVID and then post COVID, we have just started all my administration and um, the finance and the technology people coming back into it. The moment you have uh, these kind of changes, the, the insecurity in terms of these transformations that are happening on our side, when these transformations happen, the insecurity in terms of what would happen with me when, when these things go away that I've been doing it for over a period of time. If we are not able to understand and address those concerns, the transformation in terms of digital transformation and the digital transformation journey will be a very, uh, it will not be so as successful as you would want because there are always these kind of roadblocks that you would see. And then the investment decisions that you make um, looking at these kind of solutions are, uh, uh, have to be thought out, not just from a very short term perspective, but from a medium to longer term perspective in terms of how do you go and uh, how these investment decisions on the infrastructure, uh, on the infrastructure and the finance architecture landscape play a bigger role as you kind of go along uh, with this, with this kind of digital transformation. So these two are very important aspects for me. The very important thing is to upskill and how do you kind of upskill people to manage this uh, change for the future. And this, this, this is something that I would consider uh, as one of well, some of those important aspects in terms of this uh, digital transformation journey. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sabana, uh, your point of view? 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, you said two things, you know, internally as well as externally, correct? So internally, I think, you know, Vivek and Shiva has covered the points mostly. Uh, but, you know, I just want to stress upon the change management and communication piece of it. Okay. And uh, the associate, you know, uh, Shiva talked about the employee insecurity or I would say resistance or friction, however way you may call it. So we need to partner them early on the journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And probably, you know, kind of, you know, uh, they should be like, you know, something should not be thrown at them. It should be like, you know, they are an integral part of this entire initiative for the organization to transform. I think that message from the leadership and, and probably further cascading down from, you know, all the levels of management has to happen. And these are like very important steps. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, I believe, you know, there'll be two sets of employees who would be affected. One probably who would be contributing to this, you know, uh, uh, development actively, probably IT folks or the businesses where the things are getting implemented, the processes are getting changed. Another is the user of those technologies. Okay, so probably a training, you know, uh, 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 an up-to-date training, you know, uh, thing, a uh, content is very much important. Probably generally I have seen that in my experience, it is it is done at the last moment of the project, probably just to showcase that, okay, I have done a nice video module or web module or something like that. But it has to be very much integral part of the, I would say the transformation journey itself. It has to be thought through from the very beginning. Okay, and, and then how to disseminate the information because the information and, and many organizations have seen that informations are hold up okay and are not shared okay but i think you know uh, if the right amount of information are shared in advance so that employee you know it lessens the anxiety level in the employee okay so it, it boils down to the first point actually what i mentioned okay so these are the few things which i can do now external standpoint is is like you know if i look at it, your customers probably or the suppliers okay the contextualization and the hyper personalization of the messages okay these are are very very important thing it, it's not good. we have started seeing that you know we are getting probably updates that you know with our names and other things you know getting some birthday wishes or something but i would like to take an example okay uh, where uh, this has taken to a next step you know one of our indian and car manufacturer they have personalized for a level that when you kind of you know in, a, in your birthday if you kind of you know go inside the car and switch on it will wish you a happy birthday Correct. So, you know, it is, it is, you know, none other than, you know, Tata Motors had done it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm being a, I'm, you know, old employee of that organization. I am really proud of that. Okay. So that is the kind of context. It does not probably give you uh, additional, you uh, know, value, so to say, you know, but it, it, the, the personalized, the card belongs to you. It is, it is like an extended family of yours. Okay. You feel that you start, you know, having that sense of ownership, you know, not just as a tool or a medium, but as a kind of, you know, member. Okay. So these are like very important. And the second aspect is that, okay, when you start using this product, like any product, so try to use probably some technologies like AR, VR and all those things where the contents are like, you know, you can point it out to probably, you know, a portion where it's faulty or you need certain information. Yeah. You just play through it, you get to, you know, know the origin of the product or probably if the malfunction is done, probably what basic checks you need to do. Okay. If those things are done, probably it, it will, you know, take to the next level of user, ex, you know, engagement and excitement. Right. But most importantly, what organization needs to do, how these, you know, usages are being kind of, you know, uh, 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 there are, uh, how these usages are monitored and tracked and, and probably, you know, kind of reporting through KPIs and a continuous improvement through those, through an internal processes so that it ties all the aspects uh, is, is, is a crucial role. That was a great answer, you know, interpersonalization. Uh, that definitely, you know, the one is to give the benefit, but transfer the ownership as well to uh, the individuals. I think uh, in, in case of uh, Cesare, he, he's actually uh, holding the business. So the profits and all is all the ownership that have. So there's indirect ownership on the adoption and all uh, being put upon. So, you know, I have one last question for Cesare, but before we go to that, uh, you know, uh, we also promised our audience to open up for a Q&A. So, you know, Vekta, uh, I would rather like to take this next uh, 10 minutes for the Q&A and, uh, you know, uh, bring up the questions from audience here. Yes, Mr. Ajay. 
so i have already mentioned on the chat box you know when the panel was on and we had uh, questions from or insights from abhaya nan so audiences uh, since we are just uh, 10 minutes before the closure any questions you can raise your hand or any insight you can also put that on the chat box so our panelists would uh, take it from there yeah so if we have any questions today we will have it on the chat box sure and we can take it from there so you can uh, continue if we have any discussions or the last point just to be discussed i think uh, there was one definite comment over here integration with financials and pnl are most essential so yes this uh, you know this kind of tells us you know now it's no longer the pilot stage uh, whenever we think of these strategies it is uh, you know uh, all together taking in consideration the financials and the long longevity of the whole effort that we are going with Tirendra, you see any questions? Uh, no, I don't see the question. I just responded to a, a few questions actually, and I think uh, Cesare actually, uh, uh, you know, um, supported or uh, or probably validated those statements uh, with some of the staggering, uh, uh, you know, uh, double-digit, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the benefits that what he spoke about, including the service cost, which is all about uh, you know improving the. Uh, service revenue and profitability uh, from the connected product strategy. But one thing I just I want to make one point, Ajay. You know, a connected product strategy. As I was in the afternoon, I was uh, in in another panel uh, for the manufacturing today, talking about smart manufacturing, and, and the same um, you know, views were mentioned there. Like you know, making smart connected product is no more a, a kind of a I can say um, whether we should do it or not, or whether there is there should be any. Uh, any, any any thinking about it? Any any new products? Any startups or any new product? Somebody's coming up with some something green plant or something green product. It, it for 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 sure it will be smart and connected. Otherwise it will not work in the market, right? So it has to be smart and connected. In fact, people are working or organization are thinking that how the older products can be made more smarter, and you know added few things and uh, how that uh, experience can be provided to the customer. So whether connected product strategy is going to be there or need it. I don't think there is any even question or doubt about even to discuss that because you need to do that. And if you have to start with or you are coming up with some product, you are solving some business problem in the society or in the industry, it has to have all the components of the things that what we discussed in terms of, uh, you know, making customer experience great, providing all the insights to the customer and even the OEMs itself getting all that insights and which will give, give um, very good information for them to really understand and uh, improve their product uh, and also, you know, uh, create certain business models. So I think it is there already. It is just a question of adopting and uh, getting into the field. And we can all, all already see that some of these startups or the new products that are coming up, they are anyway smart and connected. Yep. So, uh, so sorry, I had one question for you, which I didn't ask you, but uh, the other panel members is, uh, how has adoption been for you like you know what did you learn through this journey in terms of enforcing this change you know it, it was a big change when you're moving into subscription and you know you're changing warranty guidelines your customers are going to look at things differently uh, how, how did adoption mean what was adoption for you and what did you learn out of this so consider that uh, this is an industry that is pretty traditional, in particular, if we're talking about uh, the beer uh, market, like while soft drink and water are by, by their nature a little bit more advanced. Therefore, and we are, we are starting, uh, in particular, if we are thinking about maintenance, if we're thinking about the technicians, uh, we are trying to transform what is an uh, hydraulic person, a plumber, basically, in something that is uh, an electronic and a digital uh, uh, skilled uh, employee. Uh, and this is enormous. This is a total shift. Uh, it's challenging, but overall also internally in terms of process, in terms of uh, lines of manufacturing, the fact that in the, in the manufacturing lines, uh, you gotta make uh, uh, an end of line process in order to connect the devices first time. Uh, and that is something that is uh, brand new for everybody in a production line. And it's crucial because if you don't do the step, it is 
completely non completely useless everything um, so it's really challenging uh, to push the adoption uh, because the, the audience is not really keen so you need to, to make a few things to make that happen first of all we have people on board and staff that are in charge to push for the adoption or the customer success delivery manager call them as you wish but they are evaluated in terms of kpi based on the other the other thing all the services we provide the apps the portals as well they are monitored so basically we have google analytics on all of them so therefore we know each user how often they log in what they do they see how much time they spend on the service and our people from the customer um, from this um, uh, from the from the delivery are evaluated based on how many how how often and what the customers adopt and then you need to identify because there are projects that are customers that are more, much more on the service division others that are much more on the sales it also depends who drives the process the project within the customer organization if it is the marketing you gotta you gotta provide a, with a certain cut if it is the maintenance and service division you gotta provide another one uh, so you really need to be flexible to cope and you need to many times you need to do an extra mile so like put, putting some data together generating something that is cool interesting uh, let me make a stupid example um, italy for Ita for italy for italian market italy won the uh, european football champions league last year and so we made something funny that was uh, let's see how people how the, the the outlets were working more during these days with respect to the previous in the same day same week same day of the week and the week before and what brands were working may better than others and what type of outlets were making better than others is this something that is a, a business uh, rational end of the day not at all is it something that shows how powerful the system it is and engage a, a larger audience with respect to that to that absolutely yes and so you need to make it cool sometimes to, to, to sell it internally and externally. That is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That was a, <laughs> yeah, you have to try out things uh, sometimes different from the conventional and uh, get into engaging more people. So I think we have almost reached to the end of the hour that we planned for. Uh, just wanted to, you know, take a few, uh, you know, key takeaways from here. Is uh, something I learned is, you know, inclusive approach. You know, uh, right from finance, uh, uh, which was often, you know, the last mile. But I think, uh, uh, you know, this is one thing which we learned that, you know, we need an inclusive approach uh, internally and externally uh, when we approach. Uh, digital transformations at uh, this scale. Uh, the other thing is, you know, uh, again, which I heard through was, uh, which you guys also mentioned a lot is leadership and people uh, inclusion, you know, uh, or rather people ownership, leadership commitment for uh, people ownership is what uh, actually drives this uh, really smooth. That's what uh, was there. Uh, the other point, um, I think even in the chat also most people agreed upon is hyper-personalization, which was mentioned here. I think uh, that's also something that uh, definitely takes a mark and uh, contributes to, you know, taking this, you know, making it fun, like what uh, Cesare mentioned, right? You, you try to make it uh, personalized and you give insights to people in a way where uh, their engagement defines the whole success and drives uh, your business. Any uh, last takeaways from your side to the panel? Anybody in the audience as yet? Nobody? We did have some questions and I was coming in. Uh, I think, Mr. Ajay, we can wrap it up because uh, the questions already were mentioned on the chat box. On sure. The inside sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, once again, uh, you know, uh, thank you everyone uh, spending your uh, weekend, start of the weekend over here. I'm sure uh, there's 
this should mark the end of the day for you, uh, hopefully. So thank you all and have a nice weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Um, thank we'll be sharing you. the video and reaching out to you again. Thank you, uh, audience as well, for taking out your precious time being here with us. And uh, have a lovely weekend ahead, everyone. And stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.